Dungeons and Dragons, what is it? I want to welcome you to the land of Snowdonia. D&D. &D. Fire, fire, ignite within me, just as I am forever sad. Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> that game the kids on Stranger Things play. Today we are creating characters and we are going to play Dungeons and Dragons for the very first time. Are you ready to be a hero, Zachary? Oh my god. Yeah. I, wow. I've been waiting to, for that question all my life. Today we are playing Dungeons and Dragons for the very first time and to help us to be our dungeon master, our dungeon daddy, we are joined by James D'Amato of the One Shot Podcast. James and I actually are old friends. We met in Chicago improv classes. That's and true. And I kind of feel like D&D is a little bit like improv. D&D is exactly the same as improv. Wow. During each round, different players will take their turns telling us what their character does in a moment of crisis. What do you do to intervene? I think I'm gonna sing a song. I played a few sessions in high school. Mostly we created characters. You know, I'm not really a board game guy. I've done zero role playing outside of the bedroom. Hey. hey. Um, yes, I, I can't wait to get hard from this game. Whoa. Boner alert. Yeah. Welcome to the magical land of Snowdonia, a frigid place full of mysterious magic, wild weather, and dangerous forests. It sounds sexy. Sounds like Seattle. You guys are the heroes. So imagine this is a TV show that's improvised where I am the director, producer, and cast and crew all rolled into one. Darkness has fallen upon the Snowdonian forest. Screams echo from somewhere deep within while a cold rain begins to fall. We peer through groves upon groves of trees into a small clearing where a fire has been lit. And then moving across the fire, lit up in this brilliant red, we see Ned. So how does one go about creating a character? So there are a couple decisions that we need to make up top. They are your race and your class. Asian, cool. Deceived Ashkenazi persona. Jewish. That other white guy. <laughs> so this is gonna be more like elves and dwarves and whatnot. But there are a couple races that are unique to D&D, like Dragonborn and Tiefling. Tiefling? Tiefling, uh, they're like devil people. <laughs> <laughs> Every character in Dungeons and Dragons has six core stats. You're gonna be good at some things and not so good at other things. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was thinking like, uh, you know, like a badass warrior, but more crazy. Okay, okay, so what, what, what you're saying like to me- not noble <laughs> at all. Please describe him. I am Edgar the Destroyer. <laughs> Six foot ten, soaking wet. I am a human barbarian. I take no prisoners, and I always skip leg day. I love my wife, I love my baby, mm -hmm. but I was thinking like, maybe in this universe they've been kidnapped, and that's my one mission in life, is I have to get them back! <laughs> we see an incredibly muscular, beefy man with skinny chicken legs. He's holding his ax in defense against this looming skeleton. You are grappling with this thing. You're very, very strong, but you're incredibly top heavy. And you just catch balance in the wrong way and fall down. So the creature begins oh, to like no. try and smash its mace down on you. As it's doing that, one of your friends comes to your aid. Zach. Who is your character? I think people would expect me to be one of the little ones, but this is my imagination realm, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be whoever the hell I wanna be. You could be a bard. What? Bards combine music and fighting powers, and they actually inspire everyone around them. I can that inspire music. people with my song? Oh yeah. I can sing to my friends all day? Yes, you can. Oh, we're doing that for sure. Zachary is a bard. Hello friends, I am Hatankles, <laughs> the irresistibly charming, sexy little demon bad boy tiefling bard. When I'm not busy charming the pants off of all those here in 
Snedonia. I'm singing songs and spreading joy and merriment and making people fall in love with my sonorous voice. We hear a zap in the background and we cut over to Eugene. I think what I, my main inspiration is I just wanted to be Kate Blanchett as Galadriel, but when she turns evil for that hot second. Uh, yes. Or Kate Blanchett in Carol, where she has the uh, amazing power of romantic lesbian influence. There are no fantasy adventure movies about middle-aged divorcees. Yes. Why not? Ah, <sighs> what draconian nightmare is this that I stumble upon the company of two members of a subpar male species? <laughs> <laughs> Did I leave the grasp of my druid husband who only thought he could make love as a bear? No, it was me, the beast all along, who left into the arms of a female strider, a ranger who took me into her womanly bowels and made me see the light of art and discovery. And <laughs> here I am, uh, trying to find myself. Yes, I am Carol. <laughs> I feel like maybe by joining this tiny, little ankled man and this I'm, giant. I'm a normal sized man. <laughs> <laughs> this, this I define my character traits. <laughs> this is fantasy. With that, uh, I think we hear a rumbling uh, through some trees in a clearing. And Keith, your character is going to be face to face with a enormous skeletal beast. Why do you adventure? My parents, you know, they didn't really believe in my pursuits. Uh -huh. <laughs> I wanted to be an artist and they said you'll never succeed. They kicked me out of the house. Please introduce us to your character. I'm Joshua. Um, I'm halfway through a painting. I'm sort of trying to capture what's going on here with the battle. Edgar's top heavy torso, um, the beautiful Carol, uh, the tiny, tiny hot ankles. I'm, I'm normal. Only I, I, in I, comparison <laughs> to all of us. I'm still often being flooded with memories of my previous relationship, which obviously ended in a way that I didn't like, but I'm ever on my quest to gather all the paints I can get. Pigments are rare and hard to find. Yeah, I'm definitely trying to build my palette. And once my ultimate palette is complete, I can rest. I think we cut to a very quick shot of all of you running out of the forest together. Go, 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 go bros! D&D has three major types of gameplay. Role play, ability checks, and combat. As you exit this forest, you see a, a small hunched creature holding a sign. While the guys are the stars and are gonna be driving the action, I play the rest of the world reacting to them. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, but brave warriors. Uh, would any of you be Hatankles? Hello. I am Hatankles, and these are my new friends. My name is Kilometers, wow. and I have been dispatched by your friend Keith uh, uh, to, to help you in this new town. <laughs> he booked you for, for a night of singing and heroism. We don't get a lot of acts coming through. Most of them die on the road, so I am extremely excited to see you. Here's the thing, I've been traveling around as a solo act, but it hasn't quite saved the world yet, has it? It's moved people, sure, but I don't know, what do you say, gang? Oh, I'm really just an artist, but I could, you know, make some dope banners for your show. I'm searching for my family, therefore, I will help you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you remind me of the daughter I left behind, and I would love to see you prove yourself. Snowdonian Idol. <laughs> I've prepared a few things for my story, but if I know the guys, they're gonna go off book, and I can't wait to see what they do. I can't tell you how great this is. I'm so excited to, to, to welcome you into our community that has been plagued by a terrible crimson mist. It rolls in through town and it causes all kinds of chaos, summoning large, terrible monsters and, and really just racking our community. Carol hasn't had a crimson mist since her mid 40s. <laughs> that was inappropriate. It was pretty you know, inappropriate. That was inappropriate. Even, <laughs> even in this non non denominated time. We don't know Connors that exactly. well. Yeah, all right, yeah, middle aged, but what are you trying to it say? It liberated her. She feels great. I no, get it. I was, uh, Liberation is all but relative to Alex. Maybe we'd all feel a little bit better after a nice dinner. <laughs> Hard cut to... <laughs> and so our heroes sat down to a lovely meal together. After laughing and chatting, they suddenly hear a commotion going on outside in the town square. 
When players and their characters confront challenges in the game, they'll have to overcome them using ability checks. Carol, yes. you have been tasked by your group to go outside and see what's going on unnoticed. So when you do something in D&D, first you have to see if you succeed or fail. And to do that, almost always, you roll a 20-sided die. For that, I'm going to ask for a stealth skill roll. If you roll high enough, you'll succeed. If you fail, well, there are monsters out there. What? Yes! That's incredible. Is His first good? roll is a natural 20. We, we cut to you in the shadows in this gothic little town. You can see people carrying torches and chanting. We found another one. We're gonna burn them and chase away this crimson ruby mist as quickly as possible. And there are like cheers from the rest of the crowd. Hmm. Well, we must save this person. I'm going to return back to my new comrades, I guess. The tankles, the tankles. Oh, it's to you, Carol. They've got a poor soul out there, chained up to manacles. How many of them are there? Upwards of 55. Doesn't matter. I will do it. Edgar, I would like you to burst out and roll an intimidation check. Three. <laughs> I think that is bad enough as a check. You're not the smartest in this group. I think you go out, people are chanting, you're yelling, and you just get swept up in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> you go, yeah, and the people in the crowd go, yeah, and you're like, oh yeah, this is great. Not what I meant. <laughs> okay, well, Edgar didn't do the best. Who's got another idea? I think I can use a spell to confuse the group. First, I'm gonna go by and I'm gonna tap each of them on the shoulder, make them go, huh? Then I'm gonna start tickling the ringleader, and he's gonna go crazy. All right, here we go. Doofa, doofa. So there's this beautiful green color, this light, light green hand that you summon up into the air. It's moving along the ground like the thing from uh, Adam's family and somebody goes, hey, wait a minute. That one over there has made a green magical hand appear. It's another witch. Get him. No. And I think Edgar is going to run over, <laughs> grab the tankles and like lift him in the air. I gotta know what a witch. Wow, yeah. you must be so strong because I'm normally sized human being. And so for you to be able to carry me is incredible. I, I am so strong. Yes, thank you. Well, okay. So if we assess the situation, aggression didn't work. Trickery didn't work. Maybe we should just try to talk to them. So this sounds like a persuasion roll to me. Yeah. A three, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, okay, we got a six. <laughs> Guys, we have to get along. You can't be so stupid and spend all your time fighting each other. Are you even listening to me? What's wrong with all of you? Sit down, pay attention, and let's stop being a mob. Well, he's not a witch, but it is a very condescending dragon. Can we just uh, maybe add him to the fire too? And everybody like kind of murmurs in agreement and they like go to grab you and suddenly you are next to Hatankles, uh, the poor soul who was being tried earlier and uh, your friend Edgar is there. I feel like I need to go divert their anger towards someone else. All right, roll your deception. Come on, Carol. Oh, come on, Carol. 16 is the base roll. What's your? Stealth is plus eight. Jeez. Yeah, Christ. so that's 24, which is really good. You are going to tell a very convincing lie that is going to get you close to the, the ringleader of this group of people. Well, I first let him look at me from behind to catch his attention. And when he's hypnotized by my form, I catch him. So, and I get him right in the gut. So, so you stab him? Oh yes, I stab him. I stab him. Okay, okay, so we're stab doing Full on stab. All right, so then I think I'm gonna need you all to roll for initiative uh, as we enter a formal combat. Oh shit. 
In combat, we break down the action of play moment to moment. Everything takes place in rounds, which are small increments of time that we've zoomed in on so that we can really get a sense of what the action is. Once you've rolled your 20-sided die to determine whether or not you hit, you'll roll damage dice, which can be of different die sizes to determine how effective your hit was. Double sevens. You run this person through and kill them immediately. Whoa. Yeah, Carol. Carol. What do you say to him before he dies? What don't I say, Dungeon Master? <laughs> <laughs> but only two words. Gay rights. <laughs> <laughs> the majority of the crowd recoils in horror, but a few, their eyes glow an emerald green and they lean in oh, uh, no. to attack. No. Clearly, the mayor was part of some plot. You can attack with a weapon, cast a spell, or use one of your other abilities, but you can always fall back on your creativity. Unlike a video game, the options that you have aren't pre-prescribed. You can come up with whatever you want. I am going to run into the center of the demons and I'm gonna cast Burning Hands. Spellcasters have a list of hundreds of potential different spells, but they have to choose wisely what they bring with them. Three, one, five. I put my hands together and say, fire, fire, ignite within me, just as I am forever sad. And <laughs> A jet of flame shoots forth, engulfs one of these creatures entirely in fire. The other two, I think, are going to turn on Hatankles, who is currently like up on Edgar's shoulder right now. Our heroes fight valiantly, using the powers of friendship they learned along the way, until... Tankles, there is one boy left. One of your cantrips, Vicious Mockery, yeah. is literally you insult someone so hard they take damage. That's probably gonna be better than most of your weapons. I, well, I'm just using boys as a general term. No, no, I'm no, it's a, a child. Boy. He's no more than eight years old and I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> a simulacrum of an eight year old. Yes. I'm gonna use Vicious Mockery and I am just gonna insult the shit out of this demon child. All right, <laughs> please tell me what insult you are saying to this person. You you are a stupid child. I bet you can't even read books past the fourth grade level. Yeah, you're smaller than me and that's saying something. You can't eat candy unless your mom gives you permission. You have to lie to log into YouTube because you're <laughs> under 13. All right, roll uh, this one, the D4. Four, Four. you insulted yeah. the party! Yeah. You, like, you can see with each insult, it's melting deeper and deeper into the ground. Edgar, it's your turn. You are going to roll a d12. 11. Okay. Plus four, four plus two. two. Yeah, that is 17 damage. You annihilate this. Ah! You take out all three of these. Ah! I take it like a baseball bat and I go from low to high. Ka -ka -ka. In one fell swoop, the first guy gets sliced completely like a diagonal window pane. The second guy gets his chin chopped off up into his brain. And the third guy just gets hit completely bludgeoned in the side of the head and falls dead on impact. Immediate concussion. Suddenly everybody in town is like, <laughs> Listen, townsfolk, we come in peace. We are here to help. The person who was manacled before turns to Carol and they just say, thank you so much for, for saving me. I, I, I can't tell you what it means. No one would listen to me. The witch that our heroes had rescued closed her eyes and waved her hands. The crimson mist that had plagued the town evaporated in an instant. Our heroes and the witch had saved the day for now. This was so much fun. Everything seemed like it was moving on the fly and we were storytelling the five of us in the moment. Props to you for being such an amazing DM. You were just brilliant at really weaving things together as a storyteller. So I think it should just be something everybody who is a storyteller should do. I mean, who would have thought that a 
Kate Blanchett based character could exist in this universe, but it worked really well. And certainly a really fun way to express yourself, especially with a group of friends. Go get your friends, play Dungeons and Dragons with them. You best believe that Hatankles is gonna dance again. I think next time we have the option to cosplay something, we might as well bring these characters to life. Yeah, oh my yeah, god. I think you're right. <laughs>